this stuff. Um, so now you will see, or maybe you don't see it, but as a host, I see it that meeting is now streaming live on Facebook. So um, if you are joining us live here in the Zoom meeting, thank you. If you are on Facebook, feel free to drop your comments and questions. If you're watching this later, drop a hashtag replay so we know that uh, you got to enjoy this content. Um, welcome to the Evolve Network, Women's Network, uh, Work It Wednesday. Uh, today we're going to cover Facebook uh, lives and stories, and then we'll take some time for question and answers right here in the group. And then we'll dive into stories and lives for Instagram and talk a little bit about, you know, where you want to be and which one you want to uh, use based on your preferences as well as your audience. Uh, this will not be exhaustive. This will be kind of high level. So if you're feeling lost or overwhelmed, it's okay. Just kind of Take it in, enjoy, <laughs> enjoy the tutorial, the demonstration. And if you have more questions, I'll be available uh, after this meeting to go deeper with you guys. So um, with that, I'm gonna use a feature in Zoom here to share my phone. Um, but let me tell you just a little bit about why you should listen to me explain this. Um, personally, I have a background in branding design hence the Evolve logo. Um, I also have a master's degree in instructional design and adult learning. Uh, my 10,000 hours of one-on-one -on -one support is in the tech space of helping people understand how to utilize their technology. I pride myself on being able to translate English to English uh, for folks that just don't understand why things work the way they do. Uh, it can be very overwhelming and we feel like we're the only ones that don't get it and that's not the case. We all go through this beginner's mind learning curve of figuring out this stuff and the best way you can do it is just by diving in and trying it out. But I know when it's live and it's public it can feel really scary. So I'm going to introduce you to a couple of ways that you can kind of baby step into this live space. Um, so let me see if there's anything else I want to explain before we come in. Also, take what works for you, discard the rest. Like I'm going to speak to my personal experience, what has worked in my business, what has gained me followers, what has helped me get more comfortable in this space. Um, but know that I started off in a, I'm not going live. I'm not putting my face out there. Like, I'll just let other people do that. I'll put up stock imagery, nobody will know. Um, and eventually I just dove in into little pools and my pool got bigger and bigger to now I can just, you know, pop it on live and talk to the other side of my computer as if my audience is right there and I'm much more comfortable. So with that, I am going to share my phone, which if you don't know this in Zoom, you can actually share anything on your computer screen, just your audio. You can create a whiteboard where you can doodle on Zoom so you can show people different demonstrations, but I can also share an iPhone, iPad, you know, Droid, any smartphone or tablet I can share through Zoom so you guys can see what I can see. So don't judge me if you see pictures of my toddler or my 75 hard progress photos of my belly, you know, it's all there. So we're gonna go ahead and share here. Open up my settings, screen mirroring, zoom. All right. So you can now see my phone, you can see all my beautiful apps. And where we're gonna dive into first is Facebook. So when you open up Facebook, this might look, now see, we can see that we're live here. Here's our little sneak peek. <laughs> of all of us. Uh, remember, there is a, a, a delay there. So see how it just flipped over for them? It's They're just kind of catching on. So you can try to engage, but sometimes it's a little hard to do that. Okay, so first I'm going to talk about lives because I think that's one of the things that people are probably the least experienced in. And then we'll dive into stories and then we'll answer questions. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to choose the live setting right under what's on your mind. And with that, this is very meta here. I've got like my face in six different places. Um, you have lots of options. You're seeing lots of different icons here. The one that I want to start you off with is up in the left hand side where it says two. It might be kind of small for you right now, depending on your screen, but right now it says public. I'm going to touch public and it's going to give me several options. 
If I want to go live publicly to anyone on Facebook, I can. If that makes me anxious, I can choose friends. And that way, you know, just the people I'm friends with are gonna see this. If there are friends I don't wanna share it with, there's friends exceptions. And then there's this one that you are going to love if you've never done Facebook Lives before, and that is only me. Yes, you can go live for just yourself. So if you're practicing, this is a great space to start. So only me is, you know, it's, it is what it says. So even though it'll be blinking live in the corner, no one else can see that you are live. You'll also notice that below you can get to um, any of the groups that you're part of, depending on the groups you're in and if you have permission to share to those, of course. Um, so what I recommend is most people start in the only me phase as you get a little bit more comfortable. Uh, if you want to move to friends, that's great. If you're like me and you have 2000 friends, that might feel a little scary. So maybe you create a group that's just got a small core of people, or maybe it's an empty group and you just start practicing. So I've selected only me. And in here, you've got lots of different options. I can flip my camera around so that I can see my wall if I wanted to. I can turn on a flash feature. I can add silly masks if I want to go live with a mask, if that helps take some of the curve of the being anxious about it off. Um, but yeah, lots of different fun features. Um, for a while there, I would cheat and kind of put on just like this, like sort of soft effect that would kind of make my wrinkles a little less wrinkly. <laughs> um, lots of fun ways to play in there. Um, but when you're ready and you've chosen only me or wherever you've chosen, you simply just say start live video and it counts down for you. And you just start talking. You start talking as if the person you want to reach is on the other side of that camera and you learn to get really comfortable with staring at your own face. Uh, if you have commenting turned on, comments from people will come in. If that it makes you a little anxious, you can kind of just you know put your hand over it possibly and ignore it. Um, you can add your own comments as you're going in there. Um, and when you're done with your live video, you simply hit the finish button in the lower right hand corner and it's gonna process it depending on how long your video was. And now you get to decide what you want to do with it. At this point, we could, and there's my, the screenshot that will appear. So if you hate your screenshot and you want to give another record, you can do that, or you can just kind of embrace it. I like to put those up there, like, especially my, like, faces. Um, so I can change from only me at this point. I could pick a different setting. So, like, I was, quote, unquote, live, but now I could share it more broadly, and it would tell people that I was live. I can... Um, post it to my timeline, I can choose a higher resolution, I could delete it if I just don't want to keep it, and I can also save it. This will allow me to save it down to my device and use it however I want to. So if you're really practicing and you just want to really play, you could just save it. Just do this every day. Save it for yourself. Maybe you reflect at the end of the week and say, am I getting better at this conversation? Um, there is something to going in and just leaping and doing this thing. Um, but, you know, everybody's got their own level of comfort. So I'm going to choose to delete it at this point because I'm alive in so many different variations. I don't know what reality is. Um, so, yeah, so that's live. So take a moment, write down your questions. Before I dive into stories, I just want you to write out or scribble out anything you think you might um, want to know. I'm going to check the live here to see. It's got some comments. <laughs> How did you get your phone? Here's a good question. How did I get my phone up there? I did that by um, using the Zoom features of sharing screen. Currently, I'm using the AirPlay technology to share that, um, but you can also use it by a cable. So there's a delay between my device to the screen to the Facebook, so lots of good stuff. All right, next, now that you got your questions written down, we're going to talk about stories briefly. I'm going to choose to create a story. And in here, I can choose a whole variety of ways to tell my story. I could choose a text-based story. I could use music. I could do a boomerang, which is a fun short video where it kind of bounces back and forth. If you've ever seen somebody that like 
holds up a business card and it kind of wiggles back and forth. That's a boomerang. Um, you, can, uh, you can express your mood. Give my screen a second to catch up there. You can do a selfie. You can do a poll of asking questions. Um, lots of ways. If you are worried about going live and sharing your video and it's going to then save to your timeline for a long time, a good safe space to start with video could be creating a story that is video. You could hold this button and record a video into story and it would just stick it down there. Or as you can see on my phone right now, I recorded a couple of videos prior to this call so I could show you what it would look like to upload a video. So I'm going to choose a minute long video that I created and see that longer videos, it just told me that in a trim, longer videos than 26 seconds will be can be trimmed or it will break them up into chunks. So if you've ever seen people that have long stories and you're like, how did you get a long story video? They recorded it in advance and then they put it into their stories by uploading. I'll show you in Instagram why this is particularly popular. So you can add stickers, you can add effects, um, lots of fun ways you can um, dress up your story. Uh, it doesn't really matter what you put on there, just know that it's, it's only gonna be up there for 24 hours. So it's kind of a fun space to play. Like personally, I don't put my daughter up on the internet really in any capacity other than a few of the like baby pictures and things that photographers took of her early on. And so one way I can do that is I can put some stuff up in a story and know that it's going to be there briefly and people know that I'm a toddler mom and all that comes along with that. So I'm going to go ahead and touch on privacy so you can see um, what, oh, there's a little bit of a delay here on my screen I'm noticing. Um, the privacy window here will pull up and show you that you have similar uh, privacy options that you do when you're doing a live with a story. Like if I wanted anyone in the world to be able to see my story, friends, or a custom group, um, I could do that there. So what else do I want to say about stories? Stories are fun. I love putting stickers on things. Um, I like being able to tag people. Uh, you can put the time on there, depending on what time it is. You can tap to change styles of things. Um, lots of fun ways to uh, play around in here. If you're wondering where you should share to when you're talking about this stuff, should I be sharing it to uh, my personal page? Should I be sharing it to a group? Should I be sharing it to a business page? There are lots of different opinions on where it makes sense to put your content. Personally, for me, I started in more of a personal profile thing. I put a lot of business and personal things into my personal profile. I've started to grow into groups, and then I'm gradually getting more into the business page. Um, I don't think there's a wrong way to do it because you're reaching your audience. Um, obviously, people don't want to be berated with a sale every single day, so you can use like an 80 20 rule. Um, but yeah, so I think, how does that feel, Angel, for a Facebook stories? Okay, so now let's dive into some questions. Okay, I put one in the comment or in the chat box. Okay. Um, oh, and so did Lisa. Um, what kind of information, I mean, do you put on your stories? Like what, is there anything in particular that you try to put on your stories versus just making a post about it or, um, and then do you put the same info in your story as you do your Facebook posts or do you make them different? You can, okay. So we'll say what kind of information should go where, um, I kind of go by what's in my heart. Like if I'm outside doing something and I'm like, oh, this is really inspirational to me and I feel like I want to share it and I want to get a lot of temporary attention, like it's really cold out, I'll put that on a story because I know it's like, it's going to go away. Um, if it's something I want a lot of engagement from, I'll do a post. So like I'll, like the other day I asked like what your favorite Disney character is and I got, you know, 
53 comments back and forth with people just kind of engaging in that space. Um, the best way to get engagement is to answer a comment with a question. So if you're wondering like, how do I get more people and more comments on my thing? Ask a question that they can't ignore. Um, as far, okay, so, and then do I put the same stuff? I am not real calculated about this. You might get more from like a social media marketing person who would say like, you know, here's how I share things. Like I've heard, start with your group because that's the people who have chosen to come into a sacred space with you first, like give them the value first and then go out to the business page or the personal page for the, the more of the masses to see. Um, I've heard that concept before. I try to think about who's in that space, like my Facebook personal profile has over 2000 people from every walk of life that I've ever connected with. So those are more broad things. Um, I'm, I'm lazy with my business page. I use my Instagram to just feed to my business page and I kind of just let that be. Um, but I also run a very word of mouth business. So you kind of have to understand where you are and where you want to want to go with that. What other, is that, does that answer the questions? And then I have another question. Um, when you are finished with these live videos, okay, mm -hmm. then what happens to them? So once you finish a live video, you have an opportunity to save it to your device, right? share it to the timeline group or Facebook business page that you want. Right. Um, I will, if you have a YouTube channel, you can save it down and you can put it out to that YouTube channel. You have an email marketing list. You could send that same video out through your email marketing software, obviously not including the video in the email right. itself, but linking through um, and giving them like a screenshot. Uh, but yeah, it's really up to you where you want this to go. If you just choose to share it to your timeline mm -hmm. your page, it just stays there. It says it was live. And that's one of the reasons I started this video with the give me a hashtag replay. That's a powerful way to engage your group of people watching. So you know who's watching it now, who's watching it later, kind of like the engagement that you get in the history. And then it saves as a video though, right? So like I go live today and then tomorrow I can download it as a video or later that day or whatever. So when I'm done live, it just is like an actual video that was made. Yeah, right? the little save arrow that was on your device, uh, you can just save it down into your camera roll and it's just there for you to do whatever you want with it. You could give what it if I forget to do that or... though? Hmm? And I go, what if I forget to do that? I go live, I don't save it to my phone. Does it I'm, then become a video? Yeah, yeah, it's a video in your Facebook wherever you and put then it. Unless I can you chose download to, it from there. If you chose delete or not share or something like that, it's gone. Right, um, right. But if you put it into your timeline, I believe you can, as the original person, you can save it down. I don't think somebody else, uh, unless they know how to hack it, which I do, um, could save that video out from your uh, your content. Okay, but we could. I could go in. Because that is a total angel move. I would is that a, be is that a confirmation from Melissa? Yes, you can save it after the fact. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you can do it. It can be done. So okay. I just want to Thank make sure you. if you need help with that, I can do it. <laughs> Thank you, Melissa, because I would be totally nervous. Forget to save it. I'd jump off, you know, yeah. go have yeah. a drink. It would be a whole thing. <laughs> I can find Don't it. leave your live video on while you go and have that drink. That's uh, happened. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that would be me. Okay, anybody else have questions about that? I don't want to take up all that. Check. There is one in the chat that someone said, um, do you put the same information on your story as you would your Facebook post or make them different? What's the rule for posting business on your personal page? The rule for putting business on your personal page is probably as much as your your followers, your friends will tolerate it. Um, I, I've, I've used and heard the 80-20 rule used a lot where it's like 80% of the time you should be talking about things and value and stuff that isn't the sale. And 20% of the time you should be saying things like, hey, pay me money, I happen to have this knowledge. Um, some people are very adamant that their personal page is for their friends and their families and they don't talk too much about their business. 
it's, it's really a, a preference. I have a former business coach of mine who her Facebook page is her business. Mm -hmm. It's like her personal profile, but her family knows if they don't like what they're seeing, unfollow. Uh, Cause she's going to talk about her business every single day. Yeah. And you could also use the 80, 20 rule on your personal page too. That's kind of what I do is I'll do, I don't post a lot of evolved stuff on there unless something's really inspirational that I want to share with the, you know, people. Um, but so I do 80% personal and maybe 20% business stuff. Yeah. Um, and then my business add. page. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, if I could just add, I totally agree the 80, 20, something that I do that I think is, I've found a lot of my clients found helpful is using the acquaintances. So as you add people to Facebook as your friends, you can group them as an acquaintance and then you can control your posting. So I post at least 80, 20 to acquaintances. It's about business. Um, if you're not seeing a lot of business, that means you're actually on my page as a friend, which means you're going to see my kids and my dogs and whatever. So I use that function to separate my private Facebook versus my business use of Facebook. I think that's helpful too. That's a really good tip. Yeah, aggregating or cultivating your Facebook is something everyone should take some time to do. You can create custom groups of people, close family, you know, close friends, family, whatever. Um, you can also choose who you see in your feed. You can unfollow people entirely. You can snooze them for 30 days, uh, especially in this like trigger rich time. Uh, it's important for you to pick who you're getting your information from. Um, and just, you don't have to unfriend them per se, if you're, uh, if you're not feeling their, their feed vibe. <laughs> and then June asks, is it bad or incorrect to only have a personal page and use it as a business page? I did that for probably three and a half years before I created a business page. And my business page is still pretty quiet, uh, considerably, you know, quieter than and my personal page. So some people have gone the other way too. Like they had the business page, it took up a lot of their energy and they were like, is this serving me? Nope, business page goes because more of my people are following me on my personal page. You kind of have to find what works for you. I would add though that Facebook does not like for you to use your, use your business as a personal page. You can, you can do Facebook under your name, but don't make it be your business name if, you're, if it's a personal account. If you're gonna use your business name, that's why you need the business page. And I've seen them pull people's accounts for that. So just be careful there. Yeah, in general, when you have a Facebook business page, you should find somebody to be an additional admin for you. Even if it's your mom who doesn't use Facebook, um, because if you get yourself into trouble doing things you didn't even know was not allowed, then you got somebody to bail you out. Also your business page offers, if you have business page, it offers a lot of functionality that a personal page doesn't. So scheduling Facebook posts, um, reaching certain targets, ads, things like that. So again, I totally agree with Anna. She said everything I would have said. It's, it's all depends on what you're doing and what works for you. But I think it's important to know the options and know the differences so we can make those choices. Yeah. So thank excellent. you. Yeah, excellent point. Yeah, because I mean, the business page has the creator studio and lots of scheduling options, and you can be really targeted with just a few dollars of ad money and get a ton of results. Um, but I don't want to get too deep in the. Yeah. It also offers offers you analytics, so you know what um, your people are responding to, what they're not responding to. Where on the personal page, you don't really you don't get that same benefit. So. Yeah. And there is no cost to running a business page. I right. see in the questions there. There's, you can spend money, but you don't have to. Yep. All right. Instagram. Instagram it is. All righty here. Oh, wait. Yes, June. Can you actually separate, if you do have a business page and a personal page, can you separate what goes into what feed? Okay. Yeah, when people follow you as a business, you appear separately. Like I play a little bit of a 
smoke and mirror, like my image for my business page is the same image for my personal page and it's Anna Bitters versus Anna Bitters Co. So it kind of so. mixes in there. Well, my Facebook has my maiden name in there as well, but it's just kind of, it's a little bit more blurred. Um, but if they're not following you and they're your friend, like they're your, your personal friend and they don't like your business page, they're not going to uh, see that content unless you advertise accordingly. Okay. Thank you. All right. Instagram, Instagram. And of course, obviously there's, there's more to all of this. There's the LinkedIn, there's the Twitter, there's the Pinterest, there's all kinds of stuff, but we're just scratching the surface here. Screen mirroring, zoom, sound effects included. This is a real challenge for my brain between whether I touch screen or touch trackpad. All right, so let me get out of this because that's where we were last. <laughs> Here's my friend with his cat. Um, so Instagram is probably a lot more foreign to everyone in this group. Maybe you're a little more comfortable with Instagram. Uh, we'll try to just cover the basics to make sure um, you have a, a, some comfort here. Hope John doesn't mind us showing a picture of him and his cat. Uh, let's see if there's a more business related thing. Here we go. Uh, podcast. So on the Instagram screen here in the lower right, I'll talk about this bottom row from right to left. You'll see a small icon of my face. That is my like profile, my page. Um, and when you click on that or touch that, it simply shows you, um, your information about your profile. We're not going to go into how to necessarily edit any of this or followers or stuff like that, but just kind of getting you familiar with it. The heart at the bottom tells you um, about activity, um, shows you who's following you, who's liking you, who's making comments. And again, same here in Instagram, answer a comment with a question to get more engagement. Um, in the center there, there's a little plus symbol. I'm not going to click on that right now because it'll start taking me into creating an Instagram post and I'm not going to go down that road yet. Uh, the search function or the magnifying lens just takes you into a discovery of all the things and the rabbit hole that is Instagram and seeing things based on what you have liked, followed, or engaged with. And a little house at the bottom is kind of like your uh, Facebook feed, right? It's just your, your uh, overall kind of running as you scroll through and you're seeing all the things and all the people that you follow. In the upper right, you're gonna see a little, looks like a paper airplane that's gonna get you to your messages. Um, the messages is very much like Facebook Messenger. You can message people back and forth. It is not a separate app. It lives inside of Instagram. Um, same rules apply as Facebook Messenger. Like you're messaging somebody you are already connected with. If you're messaging a stranger, hopefully it's to build a relationship and not make a sale. Now I wanna dive into what you can do with video here on Instagram. So I'm gonna to touch the camera in the upper left and it's gonna take me into the camera function here. So you can take pictures and videos with all kinds of fun effects. Have a good time with that. They're usually also very forgiving. If you didn't put a whole lot of makeup on, you can have some fun there. Um, there are so many more options in Instagram when it comes to clever filters and things. At the bottom, you see this is heart glitch by Instagram, but if you touch on that, you can save the effect, you can send it to somebody, but you can also browse effects. And the effect gallery is enormous. Anyone can create one of these effects. I'm not going to get into a, uh, that kind of creation, but you can, you can pick so many different things and you can try it out. This is a lot of fun when you're, you know, let me see here, when you're trying to, I don't even know what I'm doing here. Let's put some eyeballs, extra eyeballs. Um, but yeah, so that's if you are taking a picture or you are loading up video. That is not an option when you want to go live. So I'm going to close out of here and out of here and out of that and out of this and all the things. And I'm going to go back to the camera. Um, 
if I want to go live, I'm going to swipe over at the bottom. You see where it says normal, create, boomerang, etc. Live is just that. Um, no filters to be applied, um, no softening, <laughs> no anything. So it's really just like raw. And um, it's going out there to everyone right away. So it's not the safe space that Facebook is for you to play uh, with only me or a group. Um, it's, it's much more, um, I kind of like dive right in. If, um, so if I clicked live here, it would let everybody know that follows me that I'm going live at the moment. Um, and I'll see if, I, let me just do a few seconds here. Checking connection. I am now live on Instagram. And so I'm going to end it. Are you sure you want to end the video? And now. I can share it to story, I can delete it. And again, just like Facebook, upper left-hand corner, arrow pointing down to download onto this device. So we don't have to go too deep into this stuff because we covered some of it in Facebook. There are some similarities, there are some differences. Live videos, I don't know what the time limit on it is, um, but it gives you more flexibility to just kind of talk and wait for people to tune in. Go ahead and delete that one. Story-wise, you can get really clever. Um, in the create feature, you can put text-based messages. You can um, tag people. You can pull GIFs. You can do lists. All kinds of, I'll hit see all. There's all kinds of ways you can engage with your audience. You can do memories. Oh, I remember that watch. That was, that was a terrible watch. <laughs> uh, you can do polls. You can hit the little random dice at the top and it'll let you pick a random question. So if you're not feeling very creative and you want Instagram to create a question for you, you can do that. You can ask a simple question and see what kind of responses that you get. Another dice up at the top, which song, song should I listen to? In the lower right, right hand corner, I can change the background color. Donate. Countdowns, if you've got something coming up, you can do a countdown for that thing. And then you can do like multiple choice. That's in the create. Mm -mm -mm. Like I said, there's normal. There's Boomerang. I mentioned Boomerang in Facebook, but I'll show you a quick one just to kind of see. So I just recorded that little thing and moved my head a little bit, and the Boomerang is just repeating that over and over. Uh, layout allows you to put multiple things in here. Super Zoom, hands-free, just a variety of different um, ways you can play around in here. So uh, bu 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 bu, let me close that one out. Now, is there anything else story? Oh, uploading. So if I want to bring something in and I don't want to go live on Instagram because it makes me anxious, but I recorded some video previously. Because um, when you're recording a story here, like if I press this record video, it only gives me so many seconds, right? Like eventually this is gonna time out. And if you're trying to tell something of a certain length, this can be very frustrating because you get right to the point of explaining something and it cuts off on you. But you see as I'm, as I'm holding it, it's making a second one and a next one, but I have to hold the button down. So I'm gonna let go of that and just say, no thanks. In the lower left-hand corner, I see a little icon. This is how I can get to my camera roll or my videos. So I'm gonna pull up that video I recorded earlier and you see how it automatically figured out my one minute video needs to be four chunks. This is your opportunity to say funny things like that's not true <laughs> and move to the next one and say, um, don't you love my top? I don't know. It's making up. 
So you can add different pieces to each chunk of live video and play with it afterwards. And then when you go to the next option there, you have the op opportunity to share it to your story. Um, I have a Facebook or uh, Instagram business. So my business allows me to share it to Instagram as well as my Facebook business story at the same time. Oh. So I don't have to do it in two places. Just know that when you share a story from Instagram to Facebook, sometimes you lose some functionality like hashtags and, and quiz things. Sometimes they translate, sometimes they're, they're broken. Um, yeah, or you can just say, turn it off once. I wanna share this to just Instagram this time around. Um, so yeah, so that is Instagram. Can you show us the settings? Yep, there you go. <laughs> So yeah, the story controls, you can hide from people, you can include close friends, you can allow messages, um, you can let people uh, share it, like you can allow somebody to reshare your story. So some different, different features and settings in here. And then that's where you can share your story to Facebook or turn that off. Right. So if you want your Facebook story to be something different because <clears throat> it's all your friends and family or whatever, but then you have a business side over here. You yeah, or you up. just want to optimize it for Facebook in a different way because it behaves a little differently, like right. using the different creative tools that Instagram has over. Um, you can turn on the flash, you can use a flash, et cetera. Um, okay, I think that's... And Jana had a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Jana had a question. Can you change your poll to be more than yes or no? Or yes, you can. You can choose whatever response you want in that space. So the other day I said, Do you need help with accountability? And it said, I do, exclamation point, or no thanks, sad face. And those are the two options. So you don't have to keep the yes or no responses. That little pill shaped can have two responses of your choice. Um, and the question can be anything, or you can use the dice and just roll something at random. Oh. Who uses Instagram? Show of hands. Okay. A little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's a very different space. Like if you're comfortable with Facebook, Facebook is very fluid. It allows you to kind of put anything you're thinking about in almost any different fashion. You've got groups, you've got, um, you know, it feels more like a conversation. Instagram is more of like a visual display. It's not really as much of a two way, two way street. Um, and a lot of folks in Instagram have personal or private personal pages. Um, so unless you're following them, you may not be able to engage and find out. Um, how, yeah, how do you change the Instagram. yes, no? Say what? Yes. How do you change the yes, no? I'm new to the story part of Instagram. Oh. So how do you change that? <laughs> Share screen. Don't share it to my iMac in the other room or my television in the other room. Instagram story. Um, oh, wait a minute, it's in create. Question. Where did I lose it? Poll. So if you touch on the yes, you see that? I picked the poll. If I touch on ask a question, I can put in um, what's your, or no, it wouldn't be a what's yours. It would be a do you scuba dive. I can touch on the yes. I can put hell yes or hell no. Clear? Okay. <laughs> so you can kind of have fun with it depending on your preference there. 
What other questions do you guys have about this? Has anybody tried to do these before or is this like totally new? I think some of us have and some haven't. I, I've done, I've been doing it a lot uh, posting wise. I'm trying to do stories more, which is a new thing to me. But um, so I got a tip that you can hashtag in stories and you can hide it, like hide the hashtag. Do you oh, recommend yeah. that? Or? Yeah, you could do that. You want me to show you that? Yeah, I know how to do that. I just didn't know oh. if that was something you recommend. Other people may not know, but. Yeah, a hashtag in a story makes it, you know, something that when they're looking at that story, if they touch the hashtag, it will take them to a feed. Does it, um, does it draw more people who are searching that hashtag to see the story though? I don't believe so. Yeah, I don't think If so. you use the at symbol and tag people, it brings those people and potentially their audience into it. But a hashtag on your regular Instagram post brings it to those people searching for that. Yeah, yeah. hashtags are Instagram's bread and butter. Uh, if you are getting into Instagram, you want to know what hashtags your followers are using, the people you want to engage with, and you want to have a healthy mix between uh, tags that are used between five and 50,000 times. When you get into the million tag mark, you are in a sea of millions of tags and it most likely won't bring you to the top of that. But then sometimes I just like to put like, you know, puppy photo and it has a million tags and I just, you know, sometimes I want to put that in there. Can you show us how to do the hashtag in? Sure. And then there's a question tag and a hashtag. What's the difference between a tag and a hashtag? Oh, hashtag, same thing. I was just being lazy. <laughs> a hashtag is using the numeric sign and putting something after it that is followed by other people. Like I follow the hashtag solopreneur. So anytime somebody puts hashtag solopreneur, it has the possibility of showing up in my Instagram feed. So I'm going to make, I got some saved in here that I've been playing with. Like the fact that apparently uh, in like the 1900s, they put heroin in uh, medicine for babies to help with their teeth. Hmm. Well, I thought that'd be a really interesting post for the people. <laughs> and this Fun is one fact. of the publicly available Mrs. Winslow medicine graphics. So I cropped it and was playing around with the, um, the style of it. Um, so, okay, so I made a post and I have the opportunity to write a caption here. And I could say WTF heroin for babies or whatever. Um, I won't go too far into the triggers here. Uh, the caption is an option for you to just write something. Um, Instagram is very visual. So sometimes people don't even look at that first caption that you give it. Uh, some people will put hashtags in here. Some people will use um, a lot of text because they're coming from Facebook world and they know that longer uh, information is what works in Facebook. It's debatable whether or not people are really reading all of that. Um, if you need a, a little tool to help you get long chunks of text in your caption, I recommend Spacey, S-P-A-C-I-E. It allows you to format your text in a way that Instagram doesn't garble it up when you put it into your caption. Um, but yeah, so you can put a caption in here. You could drop some hashtags. Usually what I do is I save my hashtags for the first or second comment because it gives me more uh, space. And then there's been some debate on whether or not it's more effective after a certain comment or not. Um, but just since we're here, I'm gonna show you how to start a hashtag. So my keyboard here has the hashtag in the lower right hand corner. Uh, your device may look differently, but when I click on that, it immediately knows that I'm going into hashtag land. And if I were to use one of the most common hashtags that I use, creative entrepreneur, it's telling me that 1.5 million posts have used this hashtag there's a possibility I'm gonna really get lost in that shuffle. But if I'm typing in creative entrepreneur, plural, it's 114,000 posts or entrepreneurship is 5,000 plus posts. 
So when I'm talking about using hashtags that are in that five to 50K, you know, you could grab some 100K ones. What you're doing is you're trying to find a nice mix of hashtags, one, that has some relationship to what you're posting, and two, is your, what your audience is hopefully following and engaging with. Um, like if I see creative entrepreneur down here on the list, I know that it is followed by at least Renee and one other person who follows me. So I, you know, if I have followers that are my audience, then I know I'm engaging in the right ones. Um, let's say I put in the medicine type, which is called Mrs. Winslow. As I'm typing, I'm seeing, oh, Mrs. Winslow has fewer than 100, probably not going to reach a lot of people. But fewer than 100 people have put in hashtag Mrs. Winslow or soothing syrup, etc. Um, if you're not sure what kind of one you want to use, but you have a word in mind, like, um, what would this be considered? Uh, illustration, let's say. I can scroll through here and it's going to give me suggestions that have illustration. And if I go far enough down this list, I might even actually find some that don't start with the word. Here we go, fashion illustration, right? It's trying to find things that are pulled into there. If you have a, if you've converted your Instagram page to a business page, um, which from the experts I've talked to, people say there's really no reason not to because it gives you, um, you know, the analytic options and things like that. Uh, you can have multiple Instagram. So if you want to have your personal and your business page, um, if you have a business one, you can add 30 hashtags to a post. So you're thinking about what you want to include there. Um, and yeah, so you just kind of, you just keep going, right? You're like illustration Friday, motivation Monday, you know, you could just kind of grab a handful of these that, uh, that matter to you. Um, at this point I could tag people. I can tag a business partner. I can add a location locations. If they are like a co-working space kind of adds you to their following. Um, I can add it to my other Instagram accounts. I can post it to my Facebook, Twitter, or Tumblr. In general, social media experts will tell you is best to post natively in wherever you are. So like, you know, if you have the ability to use a software that puts it, puts the same content on Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, Pinterest, Facebook, all across the board, it's probably not gonna perform as well if you're just, dumping it out there. It is more time consuming to put it into all the different places. All right. So we are going to need to wrap up. So um, any last minute questions that you would like to ask Anna? There's a couple in the um, chat box here, but anything last minute that you'd like to ask Anna? So the hashtags, um, you can use, like I said, you should be able to use up to 30. Do you find that using a pick stitch gets more looks than multiple uh, full size pictures? I don't, I don't really know the results on whether you have one of those where you've got like several pictures that you scroll through. Um, I know video performs um, a lot higher than still. So if you can use software to make your images into, you know, little videos and things like that, you'll get more engagement. Go live on IG in your post, not your story. It's no longer than a minute. Does it automatically go to IGTV? I'm not familiar with IGTV enough to, to tell you that. Um, we'll have to, we'd have to look into that one together. What's IGTV? I don't know what that is. Uh, it's, it's basically a place where you could go in and watch all the videos on Instagram. Yeah, you, I use it a lot. So you can upload longer videos into IGTV. It will ask you to switch it over if it's too long because it'll only do up to a minute um, on your feed, but it will also do a snippet. So then when someone watches your snippet, they click IGTV and it takes you on over to it. So yeah, um, like when I'm watching something, if it gets long, it asks me, do I want to keep watching this thing? Right. right. Yeah. Just letting it go. Yeah. Perfect. Something else we didn't talk about was Facebook watch parties as well. Uh, that's something. 
you can put on your homework to, to look into how watch parties work. That's another way to get yourself out there. Perfect. Perfect. All right, ladies, it is about 12 o'clock. So I want to thank Anna. Thank you, Anna, for all of that wonderful information. That was fabulous. And um, we hope that you guys will join us next time we do another workshop like this. And um, we thank you. We'll see you later. Bye. Did Anna leave her con uh, contact information in the chat? I did. And I also wanted to let you guys know that I do have a uh, COVID-19 uh, deal that I'm doing, calendly.com slash Anna Bitters. I put that in the link too. 99, and it'll allow you to do a one-on-one -on -one session with me for an hour where we can dig into your specific um, questions and needs. In the technology space, in the business coaching space, in the design space, wherever, wherever you need to expand. Perfect. All right, ladies. Well, thank you very much for being on the call with us today, and we'll see you next time. Thank, thank you, Angela. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much.